So I just made the dumbest mistake ever. I have gotten zero sewing done today. We're going to start making this blouse. I'm gonna attempt to go for a walk with the kids to the studio. How are you, buddy? Good. Is this fun? Yeah. So you can see I'm just sticking in, taking a big stitch. And it would appear we have lost a child. <laughs> I may not make it to the studio tomorrow either. It is literally sub-zero in here. I'm so angry right now. So I'm being very, very quite irresponsible right now. We'll see how far I progress. So I have five kids and basically no free time. And yet for some strange reason, I have decided to make all of my own clothes myself. So why would someone want to do this and how does one do this? Well, I have other videos about that, but this video is going to be something new and different from my usual content. I'm going to be bringing you all along for all of the pain and struggle and like just the reality of what it looks like in my life to create clothes for myself. As tragedies go, it's not too bad. In the midst of my busy schedule, in the midst of caring for my children and my work responsibilities. So we're going to have a lot more of a focus on me and talking about like scheduling and just how I make things work productivity wise and showing you all the real struggles along the way. It frankly felt like birthing a baby. I was like, I've just got to get this thing done. <laughs> so I'm going to be working on creating an outfit for myself based on two patterns that I've already made that I know work for me. This is great because I am needing some new clothes ever since my fifth baby. A lot of my old clothes aren't fitting too well. So it's kind of been like a mad rush as much as I can say that to make new clothes, even though really it's taking me quite a long time to get here. So let's just jump in and see if we can do this. So I just arrived at my studio. I snowshoed here. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes. It's a great workout and now I'm going to start cutting out some projects that I'd like to make. I have some beautiful fabric that was sent to me by the lovely Riverside Fabrics online fabric store. I really recommend checking them out. They have some lovely options and very affordable prices. And so I've had this fabric in my studio here for a few months and I am in need of some new clothes and I'm at a point right now where I feel like my time is very limited. So now that I have a few patterns that I know are working for me, like my Helen skirt pattern, as well as my wrap blouse pattern, I am just going to be cutting out more of those out of these different fabrics and I'll see what I can do. Okay, so I got a wrap blouse and another Helen skirt cut out of this linen check fabric. Now I'm working on just cutting out some silk organza that I'm going to mount the Helen skirt pieces onto to give it a little more structure. It seems like whenever I come out here to the studio it's a struggle because I have so much on my mind or on my heart I could say that I would like to get done. In the reality I often fall quite short of that and so my tendency is to either just leave feeling discouraged and like I have accomplished nothing even though I actually have or to just stay here a lot longer than I really should considering that I have a nursing baby at home with my husband and and she's fine with him for, you know, a few hours here and there, but I don't like overstaying my welcome here <laughs> away from her and my other kids as well, obviously. They're all at home too with my husband who is wonderful. So yeah, that's the constant struggle. I guess I could say if you are currently just sewing in your home or in your living room or your dining room, like I used to be, there are cons to that, of course, but there are also pros being that you don't have to like navigate this whole concept of leaving your home, especially if you're a mom, I guess I'm speaking to moms here. Okay, I'm all done for today. So I got an entire skirt and an entire blouse cut out as well as some silk organza interfacing for the skirt. And it's time to head home. So I'm just walking home. I left myself a quick voice memo just with some things I want to remember about the cutting out that I did today. And I guess I'd like to talk a bit about sewing our own clothes as busy people or busy moms and how we make that work. Lately, I'm in a point where I value freedom and flexibility 
more than anything, even more than productivity. So for example, if I was in a super productivity focused frame of mind, I would be cutting out multiple different projects at once. And I mean more than just two. I would be cutting out all of the new fabric I just got into the projects I want to make. But for me right now, I value freedom and flexibility more. And I know that if I did that, by the time I got around to finishing or having time to finish all of those projects, I probably wouldn't even want to make said garment anymore. I would want to do something different with the fabric. That's why I just cut out just the one type of fabric for what is basically going to be like a two-piece dress. It's a new day and I'm just working on doing all the hand stitching preparatory details for both my wrap blouse and my Helen skirt. So things like hand basting the darts before I machine stitch them, as well as tailor tacking a couple more things and then basting my silk organza, which is an interfacing. I'm using it as an interfacing to the outer check fabric. Okay, so I'm just gonna head home now. I got all of the major skirt panels based it onto my silk organza so they will be ready to sew with. I just have a few more pieces left that I might just machine baste because they're a little less important. Okay, it's a new day and I have my little daughter here with me. I am going to have a little lie down with her and hopefully get her to sleep and also have some downtime myself and then I'm going to head off to my studio. I'm planning on snowshoeing there again. I can drive there, but lately I've been preferring just using the commute, if I can say it, there and back as exercise as well. So that's the plan. I'm gonna get some more work done on my skirt. Okay, Leia is napping. And I'm about to head out to the studio. Dark chocolate for the trip. I've got beef stew cooking for dinner. This is one of my rare, rare days. I'm just thinking as I walk to the studio about how as a mother, especially as a mother of five, I do have a lot of privilege, I guess I could say, in the sense that I am able to just walk off by myself and spend a couple hours at my studio, even that I have a studio. But I will say that for most of you who maybe your partner works outside the home, maybe you don't even have a uh, sewing room in your house, let alone an extra building, you can still into practice certain principles that help you sew and I know this because I myself did that for many years. We used to live in a tiny and I mean tiny little apartment up to when we had three kids and that was when we moved into our first house which was still not particularly big. In the apartment I would sew on our coffee table. That was my sewing station. Still I prioritized it. I would sew on our coffee table during nap time. My kids learned when they were awake, they didn't expect me to be actively playing with them and entertaining them and, and actively supervising them the entire time. Now it was actually helped the fact that we did live in such a small space. So I could always be with them, like literally in the same room with them without actively watching them all the time, if you know what I mean. I think having any kind of creative hobby can not only work as a mother, but I would argue it's essential to your well-being, to you being able to be a happy and effective human being. I have lost my keys, so I am reaching under the deck here to get the skirt. Oh, that is such a workout. I'm literally sweating right now inside my coat. It's also warming up and everything's melting. This is so slippery. I have to be careful and hold on. This door is not closing. Okay, I made it. I have a little bit of computer work I'd like to do first, maybe just for half an hour or so. 
and then I will get to some sewing. It's really nice to make progress because I've been going for a long phase, what with traveling and then Christmas and then we were all sick where I was not sewing every day and feeling overwhelmed at all the things I wanted to get done that were not getting done. So it's really good to show just how, you know, a couple hours of work every day can really do amazing things. Okay, I finished up my computer work and I'm actually getting pretty tired and a little bit hungry and there's no food here. <laughs> I have a fridge here and I keep, I just have not remembered to bring any food into it. So I should probably do that soon. I was just working on actually a hair loss masterclass that I will be offering pretty soon. I don't know how it's gonna coincide with the release of this video, but one of the things I will be teaching about specifically is the importance of eating regularly. <laughs> So I'm kind of feeling inspired to just go back home and eat something and not like starve myself here in order to work on stuff for too long. I'm just going to do a little bit of sewing and then head home, especially considering that I have that big long walk to do. So I'm probably just gonna machine baste the rest of my silk organza interfacing to the skirt and then I'll be ready to actually begin sewing it and hopefully it'll all fall into place pretty quickly after that. getting dark and I am going to head home now, but I finished all of the basting I wanted to do. So the next time I come, I'll be able to actually start sewing the skirt together. Okay, it is getting close to five o'clock today. It's Monday and as you can hear, I'm with all of my kids. The little one is on my back. I have my four older boys. And I think we're, I'm going to attempt to go for a walk with the kids to the studio because I have gotten zero sewing done today. I've also not been outside yet or had any exercise, at least not gone for a walk yet. I would like to go to the studio and at least just pick up the project that I'm currently working on over there and bring it back to the house so I can maybe get some work done on it tonight or tomorrow because I, I may not make it to the studio tomorrow either. Off we go, let's see how this goes. Our mitts and snow pants and things in the van from when we went skating yesterday. So I'm being very, very quite irresponsible right now. We probably won't make it that far, but maybe my husband will be back soon. How are you, buddy? Good. Is this fun? Yeah. And it would appear we have lost a child. <laughs> we are not too far from the house, and uh, my third born decided to turn back around before I noticed. But my husband is not at home right now. Normally that wouldn't be a problem if he was home, but he is not. So I've sent my oldest to go back and get him. While my second born, Job here, is getting my daughter's mitt back on. <laughs> Job needs to be on a bit more than that. Okay, total plan rewrote. My lovely husband came home, thankfully, because... Bye! Because that was proving to not be too good of an idea or very realistic to bring all the kids on a walk to the studio during the winter. It's getting too dark to film now, but... I made it to the studio and I'm going to turn right back around as soon as I get my sewing project here. Hello. So it is now two days later after um, my last speaking to you and I have, I'm just doing some sewing now. I did not get around to anything yesterday. It was a busy day and I did not make time for it in the evening, which is okay. Like just the season I'm in and it's winter and I'm sort of in hibernation mode. So I just spent the last 10 or 15 minutes tidying up my little home sewing space in here. It was, it was quite messy. I ironed out my sewing pieces cause they'd gotten a bit wrinkled and now I'm working on the skirt. I am creating the pocket flaps and we'll see how far I progress. sew together some of my skirt panels and I realized I have two lefts and two rights. Like I did not do the mirror image thing properly. I don't know how that happened. I'm so angry right now. I'm literally gonna have to like unpick 
everything for this a whole side of the skirt that I already did, including all the interfacing. You can see there are two backs in exactly the same orientation, not mirror images of each other. I have no idea how that happened. Okay, I just unpicked the whole side seam and got the interlining off of the front. I did end up ripping some of this silk interlining, so I'm gonna have to mend that. Oh my goodness, still have to do the whole back. Take out the dart on the back and the interlining and redo both of these. Okay, it is now nighttime. My kids are all in bed. And I finally just got to a place of resolution with that sewing project. I mean, I worked on it a bit this morning and did a bit of unpicking of stitches. And then I just kind of finished re-sewing most of what needed to be re-sewn. So that's, that's a relief. I'm ready to go for tomorrow. I'm actually not feeling the greatest and I think I just need to go to bed now. Hi everyone, it's now Saturday. I haven't been doing a whole lot of my skirt since I last spoke to you, but I'm actually just heading outside I'm gonna sit on the deck in the sun because it's a nice day and do some hand basting of the side seams and the center seams of the skirt. I just served my boys some lunch on the table here and I'm just gonna be sitting right outside here on the deck. Yeah, so I feel like over the past little while I've not been sewing as much as I would like to. I almost feel afraid sometimes that I'm falling off the bandwagon of sewing, but I think it's just a season and I mean the key to sticking with anything long term is learning how to go through those dry spells and to still come back to it and not give up on it. I also maybe want, want to start doing some more stuff by hand because that means that I can bring it downstairs where all of the activity is and still be with my kids while sewing because I think a part of it is like guilt that my sewing space is kind of locked away from everything else. It's part of my walk-in closet that's connected to my room so it's not really like there's nothing going on up there. So maybe I'll start doing some more hand sewing so that way I can like bring it down and do it in little spurts amidst other things going on. Hi everyone, it's Monday and I'm just sitting down in my sewing room here. I've been sewing for maybe 45 minutes now. And frankly, I just feel like I wanna cry. I don't even know why, I guess I'm underslept and I've also just been feeling somewhat discouraged that I've not been sewing like regularly every day like I used to. Just feeling like the effects of a lack of structured routine, needing to get back into one and needing to get back into prioritizing my creative hobbies even when there are so many other things that at the time often seem more pressing. Taking time every day to work on my projects is also important if only just for my morale. <laughs> Oh, she's getting married. Okay, I think I'm good for the day. So I did about an hour of sewing and I can tell I need to just turn in now. Not turn in, I'm not going to bed yet because it's not even dinner time, but I need to stop on the sewing. Um, I'm just getting a little bit sloppy because I'm so sleepy. Hopefully I'll get back to this skirt tomorrow because it's coming along. I did it. Okay, so I finished making the skirt portion. I am very, very pleased with how it turned out. I did not film the last stages of it because it frankly felt like birthing a baby I was like I've just got to get this thing done <laughs> it just felt like I did not want spectators anymore and a lot of this was done like while watching tv in the evenings just frantically hand sewing because I just hated how much it was dragging on and on so I'm hoping to get the top portion of this outfit finished a lot more efficiently I'm at my studio now instead of the house and I think that will make a big difference so yeah we're going to start making this blouse and I have had many, many requests from various people who have watched my videos for more information on this blouse because I've made it in two other colors, a red and a green one. So now you're going to be seeing more of the making process of how I make it. And I will also link below where I bought the pattern from, which I did end up making some alterations to, but it wasn't anything too crazy. So yeah, let's jump in. I already do have the upper portion, not the upper, but like the body portion. I have the side seams sewn and the back darts sewn. 
That's pretty straightforward. So we're going to start working on the more tricky parts like making the waist ties and the puffed gathered sleeve stuff that's going on and creating the neckline finishing. So let's jump into it and see how much we can get done today. Okay, so I'm just gonna start by pinning together this waist tie. It is basically just a big rectangle that I'm gonna fold in half. And also the sleeves I'm going to pin in half and get those ready to be sewn up at the sewing machine in just a minute here. It is pretty cold in this studio right now. So my fingers are a little bit stiff. Now for the sleeve. These sleeves are quite wide as you can see. And that's because they are very sort of puffed and gathered, both at the shoulder and at the cuff area. I think that's what makes this blouse so special and so flattering. Okay, so I'm just gonna be sewing the side seam of this sleeve. this angled edge at the end. to take this to the ironing board. Okay, so now it's just time to do a little ironing and a little trimming and also something a little trickier that I'm going to talk about in a moment. But I have my sleeve here. I have it over my tailor's hand, which is just a special type of cushion to help press things like this. And I'm going to start ironing. So I'm just pressing the seams to one side as you can see because I'm planning on taking this home where my serger is and serging these seams this evening. I recently got a serger a few months ago and I'm loving the efficiency boost it gives me. So here's that, sle that sleeve press. Let's just see how it looks from the outside. Looks good. Okay, so now this waist tie. This is going to have to be turned inside out, but before we do that, I am going to trim these seam allowances. Um, I actually already turned the other one right side out without doing that, totally forgot, but whatever, it's, it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm going to grade the seam allowances. I'm just trimming the top layer a bit shorter than the bottom layer, as you can see, and that just helps to prevent any sort of visible ridge from the raw edges inside when it's turned right side out especially in trimming off these corner areas. There you go. Now we're, we need to turn this right side out and I'm not too good at this. Frankly, I usually try to avoid it when I can, but I'm using this tool uh, I don't even know if it's called a bodkin or if it's called a tube turner. I've heard it called different things. So it has this little hook on the end and I'm going to be sticking that hook in, grabbing a piece of the end and then pulling it all the way back through. Got it hooked. Okay, this is going pretty well. Usually it doesn't go this well the first time. Usually it takes me a few tries to get this but I did just practice on the first waist tie. Okay, so now that it's through, I'm going to unhook it and pull it all the way out. So now we have this waist tie that is ready to be pressed. The edges are still kind of like bleh. <laughs> so we have to figure out a way to fix that before we take it to the iron. Um, it's obviously too long to stick something all the way in there to poke this corner out. So I'm just gonna do my best from the right side here. You know what, I'm not gonna agonize about getting this seam perfectly pressed out flat. I'm just going to do my best, then I'll top stitch it later. So it doesn't really matter that much. That's pretty tricky. I don't even remember what I did last time. Maybe I should try to stick something in. Come 
down is it gonna reach okay good there I think that's the best I'm gonna do Okay, so I'm looking at this little instruction sheet, and I must say I am somewhat baffled, but I'm going to give it a try. I recently got this vintage uh, ruffler attachment. It can also do gathers. It's fairly similar, but I mean, look at it. <laughs> so let's try to get this thing on. Let's see if we can create the gathers that we need in these sleeves without it being either too much or too little gathered. Oh my goodness, these things are hard. Okay, got that in. Now we have to put in this little thumb screw. I think I already have the settings to where I want them to be. I read the instructions and somewhat figured it out. I'm just gonna try this little sample piece of fabric. Let's remind myself of how this fabric needs to go in. I think I ended up watching a video the last time I did this successfully. <laughs> oh my goodness, what am I doing? I don't think this is gonna work this time. Mm. Um. Oh, that might be it. Oh, it's working. Okay, so that worked. <laughs> okay. The only problem with using a ruffler like this is that uh, given the fact that I have to gather a sleeve that's going to fit onto a certain predetermined length of cuff, it cannot be too gathered and I have a feeling that this might be a bit too gathered. So I'm going to turn it down a bit on how much gathering it's doing. We'll see how that looks. Okay, so as you can see, the ruffler attachment is now off of the machine. <laughs> I was getting so fed up. I know it's a great attachment, but it's going to take me some time to figure it out. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the good old fashioned way because I was trying to adjust the amount of ruffles and I just could not figure out how to feed the fabric in. And I ended up with like miles of thread wrapped around my bobbin case. So I was like, yeah, we're going to do the, the old fashioned way of gathering. So I'm just going to sew my big gathering stitches with the tension turned down here. So first I'm just doing the sleeve head and then I'm going to do the bottom of the sleeve to be attached to the cuff. So let's go. I'm gonna sew to just past these sleeve notches. I really should do two lines of gathering stitches here, but I may be too lazy to do that today. Plus, I don't have much time left because I know my baby's awake at home and she might be fairly unhappy without me there. So I better speed this up here. Leave some nice long tails to pull on later. And while I'm here at the machine, I am going to just sew my cuffs together. Literally just this rectangle of fabric and I'm going to sew it together. And then I'm going to take it to my ironing board and just press it and fold it in half and whatnot. <laughs> so I just did the gathering stitches on this whole second sleeve and I realized I did it all with a small stitch length. <laughs> So I guess we are going to get two lines of stitches after all. Okay. As tragedies go, it's... Oh! It's not too bad. Nothing like that huge mistake I made during the skirt making portion, which you may have seen already if you're at this part of the video. So I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling up on these gathering stitches. Again, I was too lazy to do the recommended two lines of gathering stitches, but we'll see if I come to regret that. The good thing about just sewing gathering stitches the old fashioned way as opposed to using like the ruffler attachment is that this way I can manually get the exact right amount of gathering that I need to fit the armhole of the bodice. And when it comes to gathering up the bottom of the sleeve, it's actually pretty important to be able to do that part manually because that way I can push the gathers to where I want them to be on the sleeve. And really the same thing goes for the, the head of the sleeve. So I don't even know really why I was considering using that ruffler foot. So it's probably a good thing it didn't work. 
So far so good with the gathering stitches, as long as this thread doesn't break on me. Okay, that's definitely probably a bit smaller than I need it to be, so I'll just let that be for now, and let's work on the bottom of the sleeve. Hmm, which thread do I pull on? There. So now this is all gathered up, I'm going to start pinning the sleeve head into the armhole of the bodice. This part is always kind of tricky, and really, ideally, I should be surging actually these seams first before I do this, now that I think about it, but eh, I think it's fine. <laughs> I don't. I'll take it home and do that this evening. Do my best. So we have right sides to right side, and I'm just going to slowly pull up on those gathering threads to loosen it out a little bit as I see how much space I need to fit the sleeve into the armhole. And you can see that I am focusing most of the gathers at the shoulder area of the sleeve because when it comes to a puff sleeve, that's where you want most of the volume. That's like the whole point of the puffed sleeve. I mean, you don't want gathers around your armpit area. You want them at the top of your arm. And some of these gathers up here, but they're kind of stuck actually. Hmm, I guess that's why people do two lines of gathering stitches. So I just made the dumbest mistake ever, and I'm almost embarrassed to say it. I was just trying to pin the bottom of the sleeve into the armhole, and that's why I couldn't find the notches, and that's why I was like, why on earth does the gathering stitches go all the way up to the seam when they were just supposed to start at the notches? <laughs> oh my goodness, I feel so silly. So this is where I'm supposed to be pinning into the bodice, so let's start that again. Let's see. First, let's make sure this is the correct sleeve. So the two notches are supposed to go to the back of the bodice. And this is going to be a mind trip. Okay, yeah, I think this is the right side. So let's put this sleeve up in here and try that again. That's why the sleeve seemed way too small to fit in that armhole. It was the bottom of the sleeve. Okay, now we can line up our notches. Actually, this back bodice doesn't have notches cut into it, but that's okay not very essential. Okay, so I got the first sleeve all pinned in and it's already starting to look like a blouse. That's always the exciting part, of course. And so I'm gonna head home soon. I'm getting freezing in here. We've had to have the heat turned off just because we're filming and also it's a lot later than I thought it was. And I hope the baby's not too upset with me when I get home for being away for a few hours. So I'm just gonna iron this cuff that I sewed earlier. So first just pressing that seam open. Once I started doing the first one of these, I realized that I actually should have probably done this pressing that I'm going to show you before sewing the ends together. It's just a little easier, but I can still make it happen like this. So I need to get this folded in half. So now the cuff has two layers. Yeah, this is tricky with cold fingers. Oh, that's good enough, I think, yep. Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to deal with these raw edges. So that way the cuff is completely ready to be sewn onto the end of the sleeve. So first we'll deal with this outer edge, fold it up about a centimeter, because that's the seam allowance and mount for this pattern. Just do that all the way around, kind of like try to crease it with my fingers. Linen is very easy for finger pressing in that way, which is good in this kind of awkward situation. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna take my iron and just in one pass. The good thing about this wool ironing mat is that it basically helps you iron from the top and the bottom at the same time, because it conducts heat very well. So now I'm just gonna flip it like this and do the same thing on this edge now. Now normally, if I was, if I'd remembered to press these edges under before sewing the ends closed, I would be able to be a lot more precise about folding up one edge slightly more than the other and that just helps you machine stitch the whole thing on in one pass. But as I said, I forgot, so. And there we go. There's the cuff, it, mind you, it's inside out. So I guess I should fold it right side out now. And I didn't think it was this part. Okay, there we go. And this is a lot more finicky <laughs> when I forget to do it in the proper order. Okay, and there's my cuff. Pretty much ready to go. Not the neatest thing, but I can perfect it later. 
Okay, so I'm gonna bring this home and my serger is at home. So I'm just gonna do some serging of these edges of the bodice and of the sleeve before I start actually sewing the sleeves on. I'll see you back here maybe tomorrow, maybe another day when I do the rest of this blouse sewing. Okay, so it's a new day. I'm back here at my studio. It is literally sub-zero in here, thus the coat. We are waiting on a new heating system to arrive and be set up. We do have some big industrial space heaters. There's no need to worry or anything. but they're just very noisy. They're too noisy to have on while I'm filming. So just forgive the coat. So the last time I was here, I was pinning the sleeve in place and I have now also hand basted it in place. I just, I do like to baste sleeves because they can be a little tricky. They can sometimes wobble while you're sewing them in. So now we're ready to go ahead and sew this in. I like to start at the underarm area of the sleeve. Okay, so we're just gonna finish up now back at the underarm where we started and just overlap the stitch a bit where we started. There we go. So I don't have my serger here at the moment, so I'm just gonna take this home tonight later and, and serge the edges. But I did already serge the other sleeve just so you can see what it will look like on the inside when it's finished. I'm very happy I got a serger. I really kind of put it off for a long time because it's not technically as high quality or haute couture of a finish, but um, it is convenient and I am busy and it is just a joy to be able to finish seams so quickly. So now it's time to think about finishing this neckline. So I already stay stitched Stay stitching is simply where you do a line of small stitching close to where you want the finished edge to be, usually of a neckline, because it prevents stretching out of any area that's on the bias that is prone to stretching. And so I've already pressed under this edge just so I know exactly where I want the finished edge to be. And now I'm going to be finishing the edge with bias tape, but this bias tape is going to be completely flipped over to the inside when it's finished. So for now, we're just pinning it in place to do the first pass of stitching. And I am gently pulling it somewhat taut as I'm clipping it because that's the best way to work with bias tape. It's meant to be slightly stretched around corners. And even if it's not going around curves, I like to stretch it just so it kind of helps hold the shape of the neckline. Before I go over to my sewing machine, I'm just going to get this cuff pinned on the end of my sleeve. So you'll remember we got our cuff all sewn and pressed the other day. And so now I have it folded outward and I'm just going to sew the first edge of it down. And then I'm going to flip it over and sew down the inside just by hand. So we're just gonna go in and sew this first pass of the cuff in place. So let's go ahead and start this just using the crease of the cuff as my guide for where to stitch. And of course, making sure it's not getting caught underneath. Basting this probably would have been a bit better, but my fingers are far too cold. <laughs> Here's where it's most bulky from all the gathers on the sleeve underneath always a little nerve wracking sewing over, over so many gathers. Okay, so now I'm just gonna sew the first pass of attaching this bias tape to the neckline. So let's go ahead and do that. Just using the crease of the bias tape as my guide for where to stitch. Okay, I've just run into a slight difficulty here, but it'll be fine. But I realized as I was stitching that I didn't want to have any of the stay stitching that I already did show on the front of the blouse. So I have to kind of tug the bias tape over a little to the left, <clears throat> which meant that I was actually running out of length of what I've already cut from the bias tape. So I'm essentially having to ease this blouse onto the bias tape. But I think it'll be okay. There we go. There was just one place where my stay stitching did show through, uh huh. Here it is. So I'm just gonna re-sew just that portion. I hope that's the only part where it showed. 
Before I go over to my table and hand stitch the cuff and this neckline down, I wanted to add one more kind of finishing touch, which is this woven tailor's tape. So tailor's tape is something I have been learning about recently. It's actually used in tailoring, as you may guess. And it's basically a absolutely no stretch fabric tape that you can sew into areas in a hidden way that you don't want to stretch out, such as a neckline or a waistline or a sleeve head, things like that. So this is not highly tailored, so I did not add it into the sleeves or anything, but I am going to add it into the neckline. Neckline stretching is always something I am very <laughs> aware of, being that I am perpetually breastfeeding a baby and having to pull with necklines and I don't want to stretch out my neckline. So I am going to go ahead and just baste this on to the bias tape only just to save time so I don't have to actually hand stitch it on. So I'm just gonna adjust my stitch length much larger here on the machine. And I'm going to get this basted right at the inner edge of this bias tape. So now I'm just uh, pressing under my bias tape to make the finished neckline. I did go ahead off camera and do some under stitching, which is this line of small stitches you see here, which is where you stitch the seam allowance to whatever is your under layer, in this case, the bias tape. And it just helps create a nice clean finished edge and help everything sit where it needs to. Using that tailor's tape was definitely a good idea. It has a very nice clean, structured feel now to this neckline. While I'm here, I'll also just press these pleats in place. Okay. Now it's time to hand sew down the other edge of my bias tape neckline here. So the first step is I'm just going to trim away a layer of this seam allowance. Should probably use embroidery scissors for this. I don't know where they are. So now I'm just going to hand stitch down the other edge of this bias tape here. And I'm going to do my best to do it in such a way where the stitches will be relatively invisible from the outside. I made another blouse like this where I just went ahead and machine stitched down the other edge of the bias tape, which also looked fine. But for this one, I just feel like going a little more high class, so to speak, with my sewing having an invisible stitch down of this. So you can see I'm just sticking in, taking a big stitch of this bias tape. And then when I go down to pick up the front fabric, it's just a tiny little stitch that's basically invisible from the outside. It's hard to hand sew when my hands are cold though. So I am just gonna do a little bit of this here and then I'm gonna bring this home where it's warmer and finish up there. That's another great thing about hand sewing is it's so much easier to bring around with you in your daily life, even while I'm watching the kids be hand sewing. So now I'm just gonna do the exact same hand stitch with sewing down the inside of this cuff here. It's already sewn to the outside as you can see, but now I'm going to do the invisible hand stitch on the inside to hold it down. Looking back on my sewing journey, things started to get a lot easier when I realized that I didn't have to do everything on the machine. And in fact, it was often better quality if you don't do a lot of things on the machine, like this kind of thing. Now I'm on the home stretch of this project. I'm just going to sew a rolled hem into the bottom edge and then we'll be ready to add our waist ties. I'm not even pinning this or anything. I'm just gonna fold it as I go along. So let's just figure out how much I wanna fold. Okay, so we're literally on the last step here of finishing this blouse. I just have to stitch these waist ties onto the center front 
of the blouse and you can see I already uh, did the hem and I pressed these pleats in place which help the center to fit directly onto the tie exactly where it needs to. And I'm just going to sew this here on my sewing machine and when I take it home, I'll finish this off with a serger later on. Okay, so that was a challenge, but thank you so much for joining me for this journey of making this new outfit for myself and showing you all the real and raw and messy parts of what it looks like to sew your own clothes in the midst of a busy life and a busy schedule. I absolutely love how this outfit turned out. I am beyond pleased. It's fitting my current body quite well. That's always a bit of a tongue in cheek thing because of course I'm in the first year postpartum after having a baby and so I might make something this week that's not going to fit me next week but for now it's fitting me wonderfully and I feel classy and I love that I can mix and match these two pieces. I can wear them together as a dress sort of thing or I can mix and match with other items that I already have and I'm all about versatility. So thanks again if you watched all the way to the end of this video and I have lots of other sewing videos on this channel about how to to sew your own wardrobe and why you might want to and showing the how-to of making various different garments if you're interested in learning more. I also have a course all about how to make your own Victorian custom corset for yourself if you're interested in going down that avenue and otherwise I will see you on the next video.